Hi, I'm Charles. I'm the owner and director of Kaleidoscope Rock Academy and Kaleidoscope School of Music in the Seattle area. And this is a video about my customized Ibanez seven string prestige. In the course of this video, I'm going to show you this amazing graphic. That's kind of the, the highlight. So we'll cut to the camera to show you that in just a sec. But also in this video, I'm going to tell the story of how I got to here with this custom guitar. And I'm going to demo the sound of it with a head rush pedal board and a spark amp by Positive Grid. So here's a close-up look at my Ibanez 7 string prestige series. We have a little friend in the studio here today. This is Klaus. So, to give you a close-up look of this graphic. A little bit further out so you can see the whole thing. So this guitar was white, may have mentioned. And this graphic was applied by Insane Skins in California. They spell it I-N-Z-A-N-E. I assume you still say it insane, but they did an amazing job with this. The graphic itself came from an internet image by a Chinese artist. I looked for a way to contact that artist to pay them for their like licensing their work or whatever just for this guitar design and couldn't figure out any way to contact them. But um, the story behind it is I wrote a novel just kind of as a fun project back in the aughts. So I would use like visual representations I find online or photos or whatever to write about certain characters. I felt like it was more convincing if you had an actual concrete image in your mind that you were describing as you wrote. So this character is Violetta. Uh, I adopted this image for her and she is a daughter of a main character in my novel series. Um, I'll link my blog and novel on Amazon so you can see it. Um, but anyway, I found this image, really liked it, decided to make it the one that I would put on this guitar. Um, the concept was I didn't really enjoy the flat white finish on this guitar at all that it came with, and I felt like it was very fragile. So when um, Insane Skins got this guitar, they said, wow, we gotta fix some body damage. It was only a couple years old, but like the horns here, the edges of chip, one of them, this one down here, I chipped actually just by knocking it with a, a pencil I was holding while teaching. So it was pretty dang fragile, not impressed. Um, so they did some body repair. They did a black coat. I'll show you the back here. So they did the body black first, I believe. And then they printed a sticker. Actually, this is like a vinyl sticker. Placed it on the front and then put multiple clear coats over top of it to protect it, which they recommended. And when, I just think it, they did an amazing job of making this guitar look special and unique. Um, let me show you while I've got it here. Let me show you this. So Michael Guitar Works in Bellevue installed the, uh, I think it's called a Tremble No back when I bought this guitar. And uh, this is a cool device because you can adjust it in different ways. Um, if you lock down all three, the bridge is fixed. You can't go up and down with the whammy bar, but you can adjust these screws so that you can go down only, free floating like a normal Floyd Rose or completely locked, which is where I have it right now. It's pretty easy to deal with. And that's certainly a cool thing because I like to change the um, low seven string between B and A a lot and do other tuning issues that are necessitated by songs we do in our rock band program. So I didn't really want to uh, not be able to quickly retune this guitar. So that's the image. Then we'll go back to talking about the guitar a little bit. So the story behind getting to uh, that place with this guitar was about three years ago, I went around the Seattle area looking for it a seven string to buy that day. Don't recommend going with that attitude. A lot of times it gets you something that's not the absolute best choice. For whatever reason, I was like, I've got some money to spend, I wanna get a seven string. So at a guitar center in Seattle, um, my wife and son, who were both musicians, were we were doing a blind listening test to, uh, between this one, Japanese make prestige version, and the Indonesian version of the same guitar. Every All three of us they agreed that this one sounded the best. They were looking at which one I was playing and they're like, nope, that one sounds better, better sustain, better character. So this is what I bought. I noticed that the undersided frets were, were pretty sharp and I was texting with a local luthier that I used to use, who used to be in this area named Chris Hart, Hart Handcrafted Instruments, and he was like, no, nah, it shouldn't be that way. Guy at Guitar Center was being a dweeb about it. So I got him to knock some money off the, uh, I don't know, $1,400 ish um, price and then I took it to Chris who fixed up the frets beautifully um, and did a setup job and he was like man that really that prestige should have come from Japan in a better shape than that so never really loved the built-in DiMarzio pickups or the stock pickups 
Um, I've never really been a super big fan of those. I don't know why. Um, and then the other thing was I teach music primarily, and I'm always holding pencils and pens, and the flat white matte finish was showing a lot of marks, the smudges from graphite, all sorts of stuff. And uh, it was also pretty fragile, like the horns here, like I mentioned in the other part of this video, they got chipped really easily. So I was like, I'm just not loving the way this guitar looks. It looks dirty all the time, um, not really loving how it sounds. So in this situation, uh, rather than just sell it or get rid of it, I'm like, let's make this guitar something that is really exciting to me. I've customized other guitars with that mindset. And uh, so at first I, I sourced this graphic and sent it down to Insane Skins. It was down there for a long time. They, they went to NAMM, they moved to locations, he did multiple cokes on it. So it really took, um, Took him a long time, but I was happy to wait. But the end result is amazing, like just incredible, as you saw in the uh, close-ups. So let's listen to what this sounds like with the Tom Anderson pickups. I really love Tom Anderson pickups. I have them in a Godan Telecaster. I put one in the bridge of my um, cheap Jackson Chinese seven string, which made a huge difference because stock pickups and that thing were garbage, um, feeding back all the time. And so um, decided when I was not thrilled with the sound of this guitar, which should be a much nicer guitar, let's just put the seven string Tom Anderson's in there. And Garing had some issue. Garing at Ross Guitars is the one who reassembled this. Did an amazing job. Had to deal with like routing issues on the size of the pickups. Had to deal with some other technical things that he resolved and did a nice setup. Um, but this is what it sounds like through the uh, Spark Positive Grid with those pickups. This is my custom clean sound on my Spark. And then this is the uh, bridge pickup. <laughs> Slightly out of tune, sorry. New strings. And then I had Darren and Skull um, just push pull just flick the pickups. So that's the, uh, that's the thin version. Significantly different. Like if you go to add a chorus to that or something, I always kind of like the sound of like a thinner pickup with that type of chorus sound. I really love how you can dial things in so whizzy wig with the spark. Kind of reminds me of the days of the red kidney being shaped pod. Um, here's the middle setting, both pickups on full. Seems like I've uh, activated the delay too. <laughs> here's split. And then going up to the uh, bridge or neck pickup, I always kick up. You know, I've played guitar for four years. You think I'd be able to say that right? This guitar only has volume knob, no tone knob. So if you want to sound jazzy, that's as that jazzy as it gets. Um, and then if we split that one, it's pretty nice. Okay, let's pop up to the, my bluesy sound. Middle setting. Um, neck. The same with the split, split uh, bridge. Middle. That's a nice sound. The neck. And then if we go up to my, uh, more of my so-called rock sound. Back to full bridge. Gotta have some seven string in there.
Let's try some other pickups in there. This is the middle second. Yeah. That's actually an iconic um, riff played with that neck pickup. If you ever want to test a guitar and see what the neck pickup really sounds like, that's always a good thing to play. Because we all kind of have engraved in our mind as guitar players what it sounds like. Um, if I do the same thing with the splits, that's the uh, bridge split. Kind of cool. Middle position split. I think having the push pull definitely adds some total options to this. I mean, especially like the back one split. Nice and gnarly in a gig way. Yeah, I really like that sound a lot. So, I mean, I just goes to show adding that switch. I could get that sound before now. I really like it. I do not have it locked down right now. Not using the fine tuners right now. If you're not wailing on the whammy bar, you probably don't need to. Because I have it locked out right now, um, and I'm not the world's greatest whammy bar trick artist, I'm not gonna even put a whammy bar in for this video, maybe some other video. Let's just play it through the headrest just for a second for a standard comparison. So this is the headrest pedal board through the uh, native uh, headrest speaker that I got on a promo from Sweetwater, I think. Uh, it's an eight-inch speaker. My patches for the headrest are actually set up for a Line 6 gauge source. That's another video I did demoing that. So I think they don't really sound perfect through the headrest. You can, I, one thing I found with headrest is you've got to, um, you definitely need to contour your patches to let your run crew, even on like the bypass a uh, regular amp mode. You know, if you're using like this particular PA system, this recording thing, this headrest monitor style speaker, it, they're going to need to be contoured. Even in the back of the gauge source, uh, the Line 6 gauge source, there's different, what would you call them, parameters? I don't know. Um, there's one for monitors, main, electric guitar, and depending on which one you have that on, that you actually have to program your head rush for that particular setting. But this is what I've got here right now. Um, it's kind of like my backup system to have this head rush um, speaker here at my house. I bought the gauge source because the head rush speaker wasn't loud enough for gigs, in my opinion, but um, I keep it here at my house. So let's plug it in and see what we get. Here, this is my, I think, my native clean sound on this. Quite a bit different. If I add some delay, or maybe some chorus. I know straight away there's a little bit of a darker sound to this um, unit, and I think it's probably a speaker. Both of these are pretty small speakers, but the positive grid I think is smaller, so there's a little bit more of a bottom end, so when your ears get attuned to listening to the, the spark, you kind of, when you go to the head rush, it's like, ooh, bottom end, weird. This is my bluesy sound. It's a little fuzzy, fuzzy, uh, or too fuzz boxy through this amp, but we can add some delay. That's the back pickup. If I split it. Uh, if I go up to the middle position, then split. Straggy, str more straggy, straggier, straggier than you think you'd get out of something like this, right? Um, neck. Almost played Sweet Shot of Mine, but then decided I need more distortion. Then splitting that one. Not so great through this patch on this 
you get, here's my rock sound. Like I was trying this earlier, and I just think for this particular speaker, not a good, not a good match. Like I would definitely uh, reprogram that. So let's go straight up to metal. Like this one better when I was playing with it. So I make all my own patches for things like this. I sometimes start with something that comes with a unit. Sometimes I just wing it from scratch. Uh, I do have some videos about head rush if you want to check them out. Let's go for the uh, Google bottom head. Definitely a heavier crew to head rush. up the dog with this one. If I split it, that actually might be good for some of the things I listen to, like that have more of that. Oh, there's a, there's a trend I think with bands, um, everything from like Ginger to Vukovi to nothing more, where what you used to think of is a, a heavy tongue that was more smooth, now has a little bit more rasp or bite to it. So that's actually kind of cool that I can split that pick up and get that. So what do you think of the commanders and pickups? I'd like to know your opinion, especially if you own a uh, RG style Ibanez that has stock pickups. I'm really liking this particular setting. Once again, if you have a certain guitar sound or whatever, it can really inspire you to write a certain type of song. You don't really think of single coils as being that like perfect of a choice for heavy. But there's a little bit more transparency guy, like this gets a little buggier. That was back to the full, full double coil. I guess we had to do the sweet shot of mind test, right? That was with the uh, neck pickup again. So yeah, I guess long and short of it is, um, you know, if you have the budget, take a guitar that maybe isn't like somehow speaking to your soul, do some stuff to it, uh, whether it's visual and or auditory with the pickups or whatever, you can often uh, transform something like, yeah, this ended up being a pretty expensive project when you add the purchase price to everything I spent modifying it, but no regrets and really now it's a guitar I really love, um, I gravitate towards picking it up more. Um, so I had a similar story with my Gogan TC. I bought it in 1993, really cheap at a, like a blowout sale at a place here in Seattle. I played it through the grunge era. I carried it around in a flimsy um, guitar bag, beat the heck out of it, cooked chunks out of it. It was bad. And in 2008, I was like, look, I either need to like, put this guitar in a closet or I need to like really tr treat it like a treasured friend and upgrade it. And I did. I put commenters and pickups in it, rewired it to have like something like 15 pickup combinations. Um, I uh, had a sparkle red finish gun to it. It was black. So now it's like my number one kind of go-to guitar for rock stuff. And um, I love it. But I always loved playing it. I just I kind of had abused it, <laughs> and you know the frets were shot. Everything was kind of shot. But put stainless steel frets on it, uh, make the body look great again. And I have no regrets of doing that because it took an old friend and made it, gave it new life. And you now it's a permanent part of the arsenal. Um, so kind of wanted to do the same thing with this one for my main seven string. And 
succeeding. So thank you to uh, Michael Guitar Works, Insane Skins in California, Tom Anderson in Pickups, and to Ross Guitars here in this Mammoth uh, location for being part of this project. And uh, I'll link all those people in this video. And if you like this kind of thing, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you so much. We'll see you next video.